to do and be everything that he wants me to be and to do i pray god will help us in jesus name a good good amen now we're going to divide the study to three parts number one compassion and consecration after the heavenly visitation when you have a visitation from the lord that paul the apostle had there's going to be compassion and there's going to be consecration after that heavenly visitation number two com commission from christ through the heavenly vision commission from christ through the heavenly vision number three christ-like commitment to the heavenly vision christ-like commitment to the heavenly vision let's come back to number one conversion and consecration after the heavenly visitation acts of the apostles chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 9 all through to verse 15 Acts of the Apostles chapter 26, verse 9. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I cast, that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them much in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them i persecuted them even unto strange cities whereupon as i went to damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday o king i saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me and when we were all falling to the earth i had a voice speaking unto me and saying in the hebrew tongue saul saul why persecutest thou me it's not for thee to kick against the priests and i said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest and that's the encounter that he had for the lord he narrated that story it was an unforgettable encounter an unforgettable experience he met the lord and when you meet the lord like that it, of course it might be in another way when you really see the glory of the lord and you hear the voice of the lord and you hear his message to you it may be jumping out of that bible out of the watch and you know that this message is for me it may be that you know he speaks to you in another way but when you hear the word of the lord like that and you have a visitation from heaven you'll never be the same again the man was changed the man was converted his life was turned around in fact the people that knew him before they became surprised because they saw that what he was doing now was very very different from what he did before he met the lord jesus christ and they knew something must have happened to the man they may not be with you on the way to Damascus. They may not have seen the light that you saw. They might not have had the message that you had. They might not have felt the warmth and the fire and the glow that you felt. But when they see a change in your life, they will know that you met the Lord and they will know that something happened to you. We might not be able to get under your skin to be able to know that this is the experience you have. But when we see the change in your life and we see uh, the, the, the change in and it change your direction and it change your language we will know something somewhere happened to you we may not be able to tell the details until you tell us but the change will make us know something has happened unto you and what was his testimony after that in, in first timothy chapter one reading from verse 12 first timothy chapter one i'm reading from verse 12 reading all through to verse 16 it says and i thank christ jesus our lord the entitled gratitude became the center of his life i thank the lord i thank the lord i thank the lord when he remembered what he was when he remembered, when he remembered where he should have been when he remembered what he merited the judgment of god and then he saw that mercy came he saw that grace came he saw that the love of god came and he saw that the things he merited he should have perished he wasn't perishing now but life came unto him he was grateful and when you think about what the lord has done for you how you forgive your sin 
how he turned your life around. How now all the paths of judgment and the path of destruction of perdition that you are going before, everything has changed now. And then you come. Now you're on the way to life. Then you see me of all people. How could this ever happen to me? I merited judgment. I merited destruction. I merited perdition. I merited destruction in the lake of fire. But look at it now. He is my father. And Jesus is my savior. And the Holy Spirit is my comforter. How come? This is what happened to me when you think about it, what the Lord has done. And you count those spiritual blessings one by one that you have got. You will be grateful. There will be gratitude in your heart. That's why I said, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ who has enabled me. If for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Who was faithful? He always remembered. This is what I was. But look at what I am now. And it's the difference between night and day. It's the difference between heaven and hell. It's the difference between judgment and then release from judgment. It's the difference between perdition and paradise. He said, look at this that has happened unto me. He said, who was before? A blasphemer, a persecutor, an injurious person. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful sin and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and think about it, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me falls Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting for the language of gratitude and love appreciation that is he wasn't the only one that saw that great change that came to him other people saw it too galatians chapter 1 verse 21 galatians 1 reading from verse 21 afterwards i came into the regions of syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they had heard only, they had heard only, they were here. If a change comes to your life, they were here. If you change direction and change purpose, they were here. If you begin to love what you used to hate, they were here. If you begin to go about and you're talking about the love of God, and you're talking about this Jesus whom you hated before, everybody will be all ears, they were here. It says only they had heard that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which he once persecuted. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. What qualifies us for the commission? That's not, it's not just church attendance, not just church activities, but genuine salvation. A definite experience of salvation is necessary before we can effectively and convincingly witness for Christ. As the blind cannot lead the blind, otherwise they both fall into the deep. So also the unsaved cannot lead others into the salvation experience. True conversion is the product of genuine repentance from our sins. You realize the sins you have committed, and then you call upon the name of the Lord. You feel sorry for the sin. It's not just that the evangelist told you, can you raise up your hand? You want to have Jesus as your personal Savior, that's all right. But you feel the impact and the weight and the sorrow and the condemnation of your sin. And you know that if you are not saved, if forgiveness does not come, you will sink into hellfire. You'll be there forever and ever. And that burden, that guilt, that condemnation will be so great upon you. You'll say, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. I need your salvation. I need the mercy that you showed when Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. And then you believe the Lord. You believe that Jesus Christ actually died for you in particular. Receiving that, the joy comes. And then the peace of God. And the justification. And the condemnation that was there before, everything now vanishes away. And you know you become a new creature in Christ. And then your life will reflect it. Your life will show it. If the Son of Righteousness 
lives and abide in you, your life must reflect change. If the Son of God, which he who is the very representation of the love of God, if he abides in you, your very life will show it and reveal it. And then the people that see you, the people that know you, the people that see the grace that has come to your life, they will glorify God on your behalf. And let us see what happened to another man that had heavenly visitation like that. I'm looking at Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, we're reading from verse 1. Moses also had an heavenly visitation. And he changed his concept. He changed his life. Even though he was now 80 years of age, yes, he knew that this heavenly visitation is for a purpose. However old you are, when the Lord visits you and the Lord shows himself to you, you will know that this is for a purpose and you will live for that purpose. Exodus chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out midst of the bush and he looked and behold the bush burnt with fire but the bush was not consumed and Moses said I will not turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I. Have you noticed something about these patriarchs of old, these prophets of old, these people of old? Have you noticed something about them? The moment God called them, he never delayed. Here am I, Lord. Abraham, Abraham, here am I, Lord. Moses, Moses, here am I, Lord. Samuel, Samuel, here am I, Lord. When he called those people, they always responded, and they responded promptly. At that very moment, God wants to talk to me now. I'm listening. I'm going to do it. I won't say, Lord, I don't have time now. I still have some projects I want to carry out. Please don't talk to me now. Please don't tell me to do another thing. I have my agenda. I've made my agenda and my resolutions already. These people never said that. Whenever the voice of the Lord came, it cancelled everything they were thinking about. Here I am, Lord. Think about an 80-year-old man. Just hearing his name, being called by the Lord. And he will not say, no time is gone. You should have spoken to me earlier. Here I am. And that's what we ought to do. And that's what we are going to do. We will not be like the people that hear and hear and hear. And we never respond. And we never do what he has told us to do. We're going to do what he's calling us to do in Jesus' name. Then he tells us in the next verse, verse 5. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put up thy shoes from up thy feet, for the place where thou standeth is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a land, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, Behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see what the Lord is telling us to do, and you see what the Lord was telling Moses. I have an assignment for you. You pack aside. All your projects now, all your plans now, because there's something that the Heavenly Father wants you to do. Exodus chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 1. Exodus chapter 7, from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee. 
but an assignment. He didn't know everything the Lord will command him at that time, but whatever it is, the Lord will communicate what you're mad. You have a job, you have a commission. And now that you are turned on to the Lord, and you have got this heavenly visitation, here is something to do. You will say, you will speak all that I command thee. And Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth my armies, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by great judgments. And Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so they did. What a wonderful testimony that will be if the Lord can say about you this year that you in particular, and then he puts your name before those angels of God in heaven, and he says, and so and so did as the Lord commanded him. So he did. And such and such, that lady, that sister did as the Lord commanded her. So she did. I pray that will be recorded of you. And then we read in verse 7, and Moses was first or years old, 80 years old, and he just began the ministry what the Lord wanted him to do and he didn't say choose a younger person Lord as a person gets older he needs easy task easier task more comfortable task but Lord you know the nature of man and you know the strength of man and you know the nearer we get to the grave all these cells in the body they are dying out and our bones are getting weaker and our hearts we have gone through a lot of things in life and the things we've gone through in life the, when you are getting old it mellows you down and you cannot do a work that requires too much courage and too much strength oh lord you know how old i am you know what i've gone through give the job to another person he was four years he was four years old 80 years of age and the Lord gave him the greatest assignment he, he ever gave anybody. So you will not say, because I'm getting older, because I'm getting weaker, because I don't have the strength I used to have. Why didn't you tell me when I was much younger and I had this strength and this energy of the youth with me? It's too late, God. God is never late. I said, God is never late. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. You will do it. And Moses was called years old, and Aaron was called and three years old when he spake unto Pharaoh. Uh, why did Moses walk like that? How could Moses walk like that? Come and see the secret in 